you may have got yourself into some trouble too mm -hmm. but i think we've <laughs> given more people good advice than bad advice but really we're not giving any advice at all so if you're right. getting advice from this channel <clears throat> you need some better resources That's, we're here we're yeah. here to we're here to report on uh, you know we're here to Carol save and I you, think about sure. stuff yeah, yeah so our, our opinions to, go ahead back Pete. to what's going on what's going on okay the provincial government first and foremost has made changes to or uh, proposed changes to um the landlord tenant board the landlord tenant board what this is a big topic daryl this is big i didn't this even is, know this how did this, this get huge. past my radar this is huge so 40 what? new adjudicators 40 new hired. adjudicators six and a half million but i love how they package it this is so i i just that love sounds how, chaotic this is so real estate like so when the real estate industry makes changes it's always like we're gonna change things for the consumers and then they squeeze in a bunch of things that really are there to help the realtors but the consumers go, yeah, let's vote this in. The politicians go, if we're going to propose a bill that's going to change things for the, you know, the industry, we better make sure that the public approves of it. So they 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 do everything very like uh, um, covertly. Yeah, you know what I mean. So then, um, so this is now the they're, they're saying we're going to make it, uh, we're going to increase the rights of a tenant. We're going to make sure that the tenants have got more rights and that they can fight these evil landlords. We want their cases to be heard because actually what happens is the studies came out that most of the tenants who were complaining about the landlords were affected more than the landlords who were trying to evict the tenants. And now I don't know who did this study and I haven't like gone through it, but what they the were saying was because what happens is this, when the tenants have these issues, like these big issues, like rent evictions or like, you know, landlords who have got like really long standing, um, you know, histories of, of, of neglect on their properties and stuff like that. These are really complicated cases. And so the board apparently prioritizes which cases they're going to hear. And so you could be waiting like years if you've got a really complicated case. And by that time, like, do you really still want to keep fighting the landlord? Or do you even live at that property anymore? So there's kind of like a lot of things there that, Tenants are actually um, getting the, the shorter end of the stick, according to this study. So when the, pr the proposed changes came out, they're basically saying like, look, we want to make, we want to speed up the timeline so that tenants' voices could be heard. They also said that the rent evictions, so these like N13s where the landlord has got, you know, uh, uh, de de demolish the unit or substantially renovate it, you know, they get a permit, they're going to ask the tenants to leave. There's a notice given, and then they've got um, the tenants got the ability to be able to come back in afterwards at the same rent. Before I don't know how many days the tenants had to move back in, but now they have a 60 day window when that unit becomes available again to move back in before the, the landlord can can. Um... Well, but hold on. Before what do you mean, Daryl? We still have to get people to subscribe, TK. I know you don't have this on nobody, your list. Nobody, nobody cares about subscribing anymore. It's not they even a do. thing. That was they in do. 2017. 2017 we didn't yeah. even have a show then <clears throat> but people don't subscribe anymore they just watch it they it's not cool. <clears throat> they hide they kind of like oh yeah that's good and then they don't even let themselves experience it ever again by liking commenting and subscribing and hitting the bell so they you're suggesting that they try it i'm just saying that you know if people you know just want to avoid any real estate updates and not be in the know and make foolish decisions when it comes time to buy or sell real estate then don't subscribe you know, yeah, if, they I mean, don't, it, if they don't mind being out, out of touch with, uh, you know, the market, then reality. it's probably best not to subscribe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not just cutting edge with Zoom, TK. If you listen to me, right, which you don't, and most people think I'm crazy first, always, like, you may have saved yourself from some trouble. Sorry, microphone problems there oh. um before the landlord before the landlord can uh, rent it out to someone else so what the government's doing is they're saying okay we're going to put out we're going to put out right six and a half million dollars to appoint 40 additional adjudicators and five how staff, much how much 6.5 million for 40 people for 40 people over like, how who long these adjudicators i don't know but who's who these adjudicators are is like they're members of the public they may have some history with landlord tenant board stuff they may not they may be just people who are like, I want to be an adjudicator. So there really are, I'm sure there's a big deep pool of these people who all want to be there. So I don't think that that's 1.5 million per person. So the duration 40 of 40 people, yeah, 6.5 million. Oh, 6.5 million. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So they're trying to, uh, uh, so listen, this, this is so funny when I read this. We're going to take steps to make oh, life okay. easier for renters with proposed changes that would enhance tenants rights to install air conditioning in their units. Wow. You know, that's like, nice. That's very nice. But then it's also proposing to strengthen protections, protections against evictions during renovations, demolitions and conversions and for as well for the landlord's own use. So increasing the um, penalty is obviously the, the best way to do this. Right. So it was 25 grand. Now it's 50. This would make it 100 grand for an individual. If you give an N12 and you, you know, or end up renting it out again to someone else and you're just like issuing it in bad faith, the um, um, the landlord could get fined up to $100,000, which is pretty crazy. Um, also, um, what's the N12? Didn't you just say N13? N13 is the um, notice for like renovation or major uh, or de demolishing the unit. N12 is when you say, me or my family oh, my or my uh, sister's coming to, to move into the i don't property. think your sister counts yeah i think it's got to be someone my daughter more. is uh, daughter going to now. college near there yeah she needs so, to move in so again what really what does this do like come on we're not we're not stupid here the landlords have lobbied the province and said like we need some more people over there because we need to evict these tenants who are literally abusing the system right so this is basically my my interpretation of it you can take a quick um quick uh, read over it um but uh the board uh is going to get some more funding um they've already had about four and a half million over the three year uh process from the more homes built faster uh act which i think we should talk about uh, last, uh next and then they've got another 1.4 million dollars to hire staff um and uh also here daryl <clears throat> In 2022, Ontario broke ground on nearly 15,000 new purpose-built rentals, 7.5% increase from 2021 and the highest number on record. Where? People Ontario? In... Ontario, yeah. Because you keep telling me that purpose-built rentals aren't being built. This is a 7.5% increase. Explain your sources, Daryl. I don't care if there's stupid purpose-built rentals being built in Peterborough and Kingston. Like, where are they? Okay, because we need them in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We don't need them in fucking peterborough maybe we do we need them everywhere but where we actually need them we, we don't need affordable housing in guelph i mean i guess we do now you see that there's a somebody hmm. sold a house for 1.65 million in guelph ouch anyways that's wonderful tk that they're they broke ground on fifteen thousand units now breaking ground and having them on the market do you know what? There's a giant gap there, depending on the size of the building, right? Mm -hmm. And whether or whether whether or whether not the builder goes bankrupt now while building this thing with all their, their giant amount of equity sitting in that thing and rates going up. What would it take? So you, let me let me. I'm going to kind of quiz luck. you today a little bit. Let's try to get into the. Oh, don't ask me about purpose built let, rental. Let's I just try. Know. Let's just try to do a quick little you know uh, session today on this. So yeah. if someone were to build a purpose-built rental, yeah. okay? Yeah. So you got a piece of land, okay? You paid $20 million for the piece of land. It's in Toronto somewhere, you know? It's a decent site. You can put up um, It'd be real decent. It'd be real decent? Real, it has decent. to be pretty decent for, for it to, like, just at 20 million bucks. Mm -hmm. Now you build the thing. It's like, how is okay. the rent going to make any goddamn sense? But let me just, just crunch the numbers real quick. Yeah. So you, got, you can build a 200,000 square foot building. Let's no bigger than that. Five hundred thousand. Take 000, notes here. No, no, no. A five hundred thousand square foot building. Okay. Five hundred thousand square foot building. Okay. Now, that would cost you what to build approximately? Like four, five, six hundred dollars a square foot. Like what? What would you be using to build on that? What would I be using? What would normally like someone? You'd probably be like four, four twenty five, four fifty for hard costs. A hard cost. So five hundred is safe mm -hmm. to use as like a total package. No, your hard costs are going to be like, I don't know, depends on the size of the project and the, the duration okay. and your interest is it safe, rates is and it all safe kinds to of say, shit. Is it safe to say that you could say- You're like a around, thousand bucks, 900 to 1200, around. depending on where you are with land and everything. Okay. So then it would be safe to say that $500 million would be the cost to be able to put that site together, to, to build that building, give or take, depending on the square footage. Sure. I forget what other million. numbers you threw in. 500,000 square feet is always. Yeah. Yeah. So a thousand bucks a square foot, okay. easy numbers, 500,000 square feet. 
it costs you 500 million okay. in order to build this is i'm just trying to get this this answer right here how yeah. much equity do you think you'd have to have in that project oh, that question you could uh, ask me from it's 35 percent okay. on a okay. on a so, purpose so, bill rental for sure okay so you're looking get at like 175 crazy. million dollars you need to have cash equity to build that building that costs 500 million dollars yeah 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 no loan instead that's like, of that's your money like you that's your that's what you that's the amount of equity you've got in that well, the general partner has to have that kind of money in the deal yeah. right so not a lot of guys have that kind of money a lot of guys have that kind of money a lot of guys build but do they want to use it on this <laughs> don't have that right? kind of money yeah <laughs> do they want to use it on this yeah. now yeah. in this city or country right yeah does it make sense? And are construction costs going to be that much different in Guelph or Peterborough or anywhere else that they're building? I don't know. I can't imagine why they would be. I mean, now I would think it'd be harder to get trades out there because there's such a demand closer to, to Toronto. But so it's safe who to the say hell it's, knows? Not, it's not much cheaper to build out there. Can't be. No. So even if someone wanted Just to build a, a little tiny building in Peterborough, they would still, even if they well, do half the size, 250 million, right? You'd still be at, you know, $90,000, $90 dollars of of equity that you equity. need to have just to be able to build that building this is the thing and this is this yeah. is why and, and so for for a condo for example i mean mm -hmm. you could probably get away with 10 12 percent equity mm -hmm. to go ahead and get the construction financing yeah. right and then that equity some of it can be from from pre-sales from the deposits right yeah which is which is interesting in and of itself probably yeah. another layer of the problem but so this becomes it's, the issue. It's hard to decide. Well, it's not hard to decide to which way to go. I mean, unless so, so if you're if you're building a new building, I don't even know how they figure out like the rent turnover and what the increases are gonna be over time. But like you have to have some kind of a formula over 30, 40, 50 years to make it make sense. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. if you can how, how much does it cost to buy a, a, a existing unit? today in a rental building right like 300,000 for something that's older 300 550 for newer. right yeah and so but it's way more to build a new one and own it mm -hmm. so it's like I, I just don't understand how people do it unless it's like big pension fund REIT kind of money or like I said before like you take a company um like like Rio can who bought a strip mall Right. And has owned and operated it for 20 years or 30 years or 15 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were smart enough to put them near future transit or able to bring future transit towards their their project. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden they're redeveloping them into rental buildings because they own the land already. Yeah. Right. And so <clears> now <throat> they, instead of having a retail strip mall, they'll have a retail strip mall with a couple of towers on top of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so right. all, when you say bring transit, you mean like like they're bringing in a subway station or go, go train or something like that, right? It's in that line? Well, a lot of the subway stations tend to gravitate, it seems, towards large developers or large real estate owners' properties. Mm. Con co coincidentally? Well, which, what comes first, the chicken <clears throat> or the egg, right? Yeah. But why is that important? So why, why is it that the developers want to be near transit? Well, always you'd get more density if you're, so they can if you're build near transit, more. right? So when they, when the chances are you're there. not, you weren't in the yellow belt, right? You weren't in neighborhoods. If you were near a subway, you're in some kind of mixed use or apartment neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? So you're able to increase the 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 use. You you'd be able to maximize the use of the property, right? Mm -hmm. Which and what and that's coming from the provincial government. That's coming that's from the provincial the, government, sure. The provincial Official policy plans. statement is all sure. part of that, right? absolutely supposed to be anyways but it feels like it's just more people planners opinions based so it, loosely on that document so if the transit station's there so for example they put in a new go station in um bowmanville right but in that area right it's obviously got some you know part of the city plan has already got the different uh, land use uh, designations but a developer came in and he would say no 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 according to the higher level of government in the province we're within so much distance of a go station. Therefore, your site that you thought would be X could actually be 10 times more. And here's our proposal. And they'd be able to fight them a lot easier that way. Sure. 
right? And so the city has to support it's it. It's not a fight now because now it's like, this is the plan. We want you to do it here, Yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, the fight might be over how high the building is or how wide or, you know, how where it's tiered or whatever, all mm -hmm. kinds of horse shit. But like the fight isn't about increasing the density or putting more homes there, right? It's mm -hmm. just, what does it look like? And what is it? And how is it going to affect the community? Well, and then, you know, from, well, that's what the, that's what the, the city is thinking about, but the developers mm -hmm. thinking about like, how do I make sure I get the amount of square footage I need for this deal to work? Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm sure, you know, some developers want to make a really nice building, but the environment doesn't really allow for that and maximizing profits. And so the margins are much lower than most people think, right? So with the margins being as low as, as, as we know they are, you know, if you make a mistake, then you're, you're done. So you don't really want to design things off the hop that are going to cost more money, right? Because mm -hmm. you know something's going to go wrong. You know mm -hmm. lots of things are going to go wrong and the budget's going to change. And you, I mean, you don't know what it looks like at the end of the day, what you're going to spend, right? It's all mm -hmm. guessing. So it's like... They, they, the, the system incentivizes you to build a really boring building, mm -hmm. right? And then the city chops down the amount of available possible space that you could build on that piece of land with very few good reasons. But, I mean, those but are obviously the, the province. The province has to have some sort of, um, and I'm, I'm getting to something here, but the province uh, obviously has to have some sort of control where the city will will basically have to comply with what the developer is proposing. Right. Why? Like when, well, cause when they, I always see them reference in their applications that it, you know, it meets the provincial policy statements, guidelines for this or the greater golden horseshoe. Blah, blah. They have yeah. all those type of, yeah. That's like a co copy and paste in every single planning opinion. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, 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 and well, okay. But again, so the planner, the planner that you hire, his job is to convince the, 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 the higher ups that this is within that policy, right? Mm -hmm. But the the policy's gray, and then everybody's opinion is different on how to interpret it, and so it's like, yeah, every develop no, no developer is going to go like, here's why you I shouldn't be able to do this, right? So you find the parts of the plan that say you can do, you ignore the parts of the plan that say maybe you can't. Ignore those parts. Well, I've I mean, never even read those parts. Who I I don't even would want realize to they parts. existed, right? right? I'm not so, gonna put so, that in my report. Well, but your consultants tell you along the way that there might be some hurdles that you have to overcome, and then you know this is this is what you do with the city. You do a little dance, and hopefully you can squeeze out what you thought you could at the beginning, or something relatively close, or the market takes off, or you know, like this is what happens. And so the people who go bankrupt, a lot of the times, it's because they mm. thought they could get something or it took a lot longer. They couldn't carry the property for any longer because of maybe like they were over leveraged on it. Or they were dumb and they bought something that they bought something wrong. I mean, there's a lot of people that come in. They're like, I'm going to do this. And like, take, for example, I won't use the guy's name. Big developer bought uh, a, a property at Young and Eglinton. Mm -hmm. Prominent building. Like everybody want, wanted to shop in this place forever. And they ended up buying it just south of Eglinton. And to the north of this property is a building that's like, I don't know, 60 stories high or like something crazy, 45 stories, right? And it was built a long time ago. But the plan says on the south side of the street, you don't get that kind of density. And so he went in there and he paid a fortune for it. And he thought he was going to get the 60 stories like the guy north of him or whatever it is, 40 stories, 42. And he got like half. Mm. But in the like 10 years he spent fighting with the city or eight years or whatever it was before he started selling, the prices went crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So he got half, but it ended up working out probably fine for him, right? Mm. But you don't know this. So like the rule in the industry is to like base it on today, which yeah. I think is completely asinine. But I mean, what else do hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's that's crazy. Actually, I'm just, I'm glad you pointed that out because I think that's like your part of your MO, you know, 
is yeah, being I don't able do that. to like push the envelope because if everyone's just living in the past, we know that this site won't be actually approved for years from now and there'll be all sorts of new precedent by then. So, well, but it could go one way or the other, right? So it's like as a developer, I mean, you can't plan that it's going the wrong way because then you can't buy anything ever. So you have to kind of be like, I hope it goes the right way, happen. man. Gotta happen. <laughs> right? But it's like there's reset points where like now if you're buying something and you're borrowing money now, like maybe the rates will get worse. But like, I don't think we're going to have like a fucking crash again. Just mm -hmm. could be like a prolonged, like what the hell's going on around here? Mm. So now might be a good time because now if you can make the numbers make sense now and you're smart and you give yourself maybe a little cushion, like rates will go up another point or something, two mm. points or whatever you want to do. Like, but if you can make your safer, smarter metrics now make sense, then like, why not? Because it's later. I mean, how, how often has it lasted like longer than a few years i mean it takes all even if you plan that it's going to take two years it doesn't take two years and if you plan it's going to take three years it takes seven years like mm -hmm. you don't know what you're going to be up against and, and now what you see a lot of which is really interesting i don't know if we're getting towards where you're heading oh, I'm but going. like people are now that had zoning are like hold on like the environment changed since we started this thing yeah um we're in a crisis now. All these new things are coming up like you want to get to, the build more yeah. homes better. There's my plans. Bullshit, right? Sorry, TK. <laughs> no, not no. not you. I mean, the developers with No, their, but the, with yeah, their the developers like, well, you know what? I They gave me 24. <clears throat> yeah. That guy's going for like 40, right? Yeah. And so I may as well, right? And that you'll do a calculation. You'll be like, does it make sense to carry it for another two years to get another 20 stores? Fuck yeah, it does, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a good, a good question now is how do you budget that? Because if you're buying a property and you're buying a heck of a property, you're buying something that's $20 million, you need to be able to carry that property for. You're, you're doing spreadsheets like all the time, like yeah. all the time. If you're a developer, like every day something comes at you and it's like, oh shit. Okay. Like I didn't think of that or this came up or this guy came in more expensive than I anticipated or for this reason, this consultant is more. Now you need this consultant for some stupid reason. Or, mm -hmm. you know, like who knows what, but it's like you're constantly fucking around with that spreadsheet, mm -hmm. right? Because the, or, or, or like a zone. Another one of your many comes, skills is right? spreadsheets. You're a good spreadsheet guy. There's a couple you're, of, you're I, good. You're good at spreadsheets. One yeah. function. You, that's you it, figured though. out Excel back in like 97 and you just like stuck with it. Before, before I was before using, that. it was called Lotus, Lotus spreadsheets, like on yeah. a little DOS thing Yeah. when I was like five or something. <laughs> yeah. You're a spreadsheet guy for sure. I'm a spreadsheet guy. Yeah. So soon, that's soon chat GPT, I'll be able to tell it what I want it to make as a spreadsheet. Probably can do that now, actually. Mm, That'd nice. be fucking cool. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Don't worry. We're, we're staying on track. We're good. Are we so, on track? So now that you're, so you got these happened? spreadsheets. Yeah. So we're I feel got like these you're interviewing me. What's going on? I'm here? not interviewing. I'm just asking you questions. We got okay. these spreadsheets, right? And so now we've got all these details, right? And we need to be able to continue to finance this project. I mean, that's like got to be one of the hardest things to do is to be able to figure out how talk... long you can carry that debt for. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. It's, it, and generally on these kind of deals, it's, it's a variable rate. Like it's moving with, with prime. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I just, I met with a, a younger guy a, a few days ago and we were, he's a, he's a younger developer and we were talking about it and it's like his interest reserve ran out early. Right. Cause of mm -hmm. the environment, right. Rates are going up. He's gone a variable and rates are, you know, it's it's like it ate up his reserve for interest that they put aside, you know, like four or five months earlier, <clears> right? It was supposed to be 18 months. It, it, they ate it up in like 13 or 14. But I mean, you, you had to see that coming, right? So that spreadsheet's constantly dwindling down. As the rate goes up, now your reserve is going down and you're like, we're going to need more money, right? Where are we going to get more money from? It, 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 it's it's hard to get the right number off, off, off the hop, right? So generally there's a moment in time where it's like, shit, like we got to refinance or we need to get another partner or we got to raise some money somehow, you know, mm -hmm. there's always something, but like, well, I don't even know what the hell I was talking about anymore. Well, the bottom line is the, the money part, like 
Why? Because I'm thinking about this one site this week at a meeting with guys and their neighbor went bankrupt because he sold the project. He sold the whole project and, uh, you know, hundreds of units. And uh, I guess because the city wasn't giving him the approval, it bankrupt him. Like that well, that's it. what this uh, could, company in Vancouver said. Like it yeah. was because the, the entitlements took too long, but it's yeah. not. It wasn't. It, it was wasn't. a spreadsheet. Well, it, somebody's spreadsheet was wrong when they yeah. bought the land, okay? Yeah. And not only that, I mean, there are people that have balance sheets that are capable of handling 11 development projects simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And it's hard for guys that started like a decade earlier that neither had any development experience mm-hmm. to really pull that off, right? And have the market tank simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Look, everybody's a genius in an up market. You get as many deals under contract as you can if you don't give a shit, right? Mm-hmm. Make as much money as you can. And then at some point, you know, some people are going to get fucked by me, right? Mm-hmm. So like you take a company like uh, Cressford, for example, like they were going bonkers, gung-ho, gung-ho, gung-ho. And then 2017, the wind shifted and boom, they got swiped out of existence, right? Mm. But because they, you could buy stuff at any price for a while and you could put it on the market, you could build it and you made a fortune, right? Everybody was making a fortune. But when the music stops, some people can like withhold that, right? Mm-hmm. Madamies and Tridells and like guys that had figured out the hard way years ago how to brace for a storm and how to sniff out a storm, right? But it's the new guys with the bravado that come in at the wrong time thinking the market only goes up and I'm going to be a superstar. These are the guys that get killed, mm-hmm. right? And, and this is part of the cycle. Unfortunately, you know, somebody has to be that guy. That's just how it works. Mm-hmm. Somebody everybody has to wants get... to be a developer. It's crazy, and it's how so, everybody. Everybody does. wants to be like you talk. I have so many people, and like I've heard, I've heard it from many, many people, and like especially like women who say, "My husband is a builder, or my husband is a developer." This is a very common thing. Sure, my husband is a builder. My husband's a developer, and I imagine <clears throat> in most cases there has not been much built nor developed, but hmm. there's some attempts for sure. Right. Yeah, or some funds put into maybe, or something like that, partnerships and stuff like that. But the reality is, is like, it's much more complicated, right? There's way more risk. It's really hard to find deals. There's a ton of stuff that that's involved. Well, and again, I just... on the way up, like you buy a piece of land and you hang mm-hmm. on to it, and then mm-hmm. you sell it, right? And if you mm-hmm. do stuff in between, maybe it was good, maybe it was worthwhile, maybe not even necessary, mm-hmm. right? But it's like in these crazy environments, it's like you have to pivot. You can't use the old system. I I was speaking to some guys uh, on the deal I'm working on last week, and they were so smart. They were older. They'd been in the game for a long time, and they had like recognized that the environment is different. They need to, there's holes that can be plugged now with, with, financing right so -hmm. they recognize that all the deals don't work like they used to work anymore there's a need for equity right there's a need for equity out there Mm -hmm. that replaced the need for debt right because the debt is scared and the debt doesn't look at values the same way anymore right Mm -hmm. so you need these underwriting entrepreneurial development kind of people with money that can like put the capital in the right places, Mm -hmm. right? That can put the capital in the right places now because- To satisfy everybody. And so the deal can push forward. So the deal can push forward, right? Because if, if, like my, my deal that I'm working on, for example, I had to put it together in a way that I've never done before. But it used to be, you know, here's some equity from, from us and we're going to borrow the rest from somebody. Right mm-hmm. at the best rate and at get a rate, the, right? But so, get the best yeah. LTV we can exactly. get. But, and put but the, ben- the benefit in. now, the benefit now to these equity guys is they're like, well, we could take on debt with this money somewhere else at some sort of fixed rate with like limited returns. Or now we can actually be a part of this development and have a much greater potential for returns. Right. So like there's like astronomically different so, returns. So they're like, okay, now instead of lending it out as debt. There's actually, you know, a ton more risk there and, and everything else. 
we can put it in um, as equity and that we, we can end up having a better return and we actually have like a stake in this development, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no one ahead of them, right? Exactly. Like, so, 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 so the risk for them now becomes like the delta between the purchase price and the value. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Because it's not the same. Like it can't be. I it mean, I guess same. some guys are capable of stealing stuff from people still, mm -hmm. or getting ridiculous deals because they know something's coming or something, and no, all of that a sudden one day is where the value is. Well, part of the it's, spreadsheet. It's, it's on the spreadsheet. That's the value. Otherwise, when they look at it, they go, where's the value? <laughs> but when they look at you the spreadsheet. You have to see it at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> but if go, it's one. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. yeah I get it. I and get that's it. what people, listen, this is what I'm dealing with right now on multifamily is that people are coming to me and they're saying, well, the cap rate and oh, you know, the, the income and the tenants have been there forever. And I'm like, all right, well, like here, like I have my own spreadsheet for that. Here's exactly how we're going to reposition it. Here is exactly where, you know, the rents will be after a couple of years. Here's your refinance. Here's how much money you're going to pull out of this deal. This is what you're going to be cash flowing at the end. Here's all the things that, you know, could go wrong. And here's how we're going to, you know, adjust for that, right? Within reason. And they go, oh, but it's it's not a good cap rate. And I'm like, and you don't know what you're talking about. And you're never going to find a property. So good luck. Because you're never going to buy that way. Like your strategy has to be on a spreadsheet somewhere on, on how you're going to make money in real estate in the, in the Toronto area. If you don't have that sort of strategy in place, you're just a retail investor buying with everybody else and you can just get in line. And if the market changes, you're screwed. There is no, there is no hope for you. No. And so how do you find an edge in a market where there's so much money chasing nothing? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. How do you find those deals? You have the do you have a better spreadsheet? I mean that. Well, I'm okay. dead serious. That's a that's a legitimate answer. You the, it's the better strategy that you have, you'll see things that others won't. Correct. And you can find the value where others people will look at the deal and say, ah, what if, what if? You're gonna say, sure, right now it sucks, but look at where this is gonna be in two to three years or more. Sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if I wasn't such a dick, I'd share my brilliant strategy that seems to be working out. But like, yeah, well, we're not that thing is that. worth gold, right? Yeah, no worries. But 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 like, that's the thing. It's not just the spreadsheet. It's 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 the ability to come up with something or a way to see something that others may not have seen because they've seen the land already. That mm -hmm. is for certain, right? Yeah. They've seen the deal, right? Yeah, like they've seen the nobody's price. inventing land here anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so like you're probably not the first guy to come along and call these people and want to buy the property. So like, how do you do it different than the guys who couldn't put it together before? Mm -hmm. And and that's different for different people, right? Depending on skill set and I guess financing behind them and the experience and all kinds of stuff. Right. But like for me, the, the spreadsheet's important, but you have to know what you can do to the property before you can make the spreadsheet. Right. And mm -hmm. so that means you have to understand all the planning and the zoning and what's going on with other developments in the area and what, uh, you know, what's that guy got 34. And like, what are they saying about that 34? Is it realistic? Or is it really going to be 28? Like, how do I figure out what the hell the value is of this thing mm -hmm. differently than everyone else? Right? Or where is there an opportunity in the market that other people may not be so interested? In? That's what I look for. Because I'm not like Menkes, right? I'm not mm -hmm. throwing around hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something that all those guys don't give a shit about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's probably more guys like me though than them. Definitely. Right. Yeah. So you got to figure out like a, a a way to see things, or 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 even a confidence in how you see it to move forward. I think yeah. is pretty important, right? So like, if I came in to your office, TK, and you were the potential investor, and mm -hmm. I was the developer, and I was like, hey, you know, like I kind of think I might do this and. Uh, yeah, this guy got five and I'm confident that we're going to get four is very different than like the last one I did. We got 300% and we, I know for a fact we can do this because I did one just down the street and I worked on this and I, like, there's a different feeling you get from that guy. Right. So it's like this yeah. confidence in the deal where it's like, I know what that guy did. I know what that sold for. I worked on this one. I worked on that. I know that 
gives people a different reason to invest in that deal too, mm -hmm. right? So, so the spreadsheet is important, but it's like it's a, it's part of the story. I think I said this before, or maybe I said it on the Tom Story Show. Like you're building a story because it's not real until you actually have like this stamped zone certificate, right? Mm -hmm. The rest of it is like, I, I think this is what we can do, yeah, right? Looks good, right? <laughs> well, but it's like, okay, so wh what I think is important to me only, but now yeah. it's like, Okay, so Greg Ewins it agrees. A supporting cast, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right, and then the municipal lawyer says, I can get behind this, and the architect yeah. is like, right? And then you go and see what the city says. Yeah. And if the city says, you know what? Like, we're okay with this. Yeah. Which is not often, but it depends on your approach now. Yeah. But the city's under pressure, man. Thank you. The city's under pressure. They Thank have mandates you. now. Thank you. We have is a new announcement it? this week. Tell me. Well, the minister, Steve Clark, housing minister, says we as a government believe that Ontario is a place to grow. And they even responded to a question when someone said, um, you know, well, what about any more potential um, places uh, that will be affected by the green belt? And he, he responded like that. And he said, no, we believe that everywhere in Ontario is a place to grow. So they really are pushing this. And basically the new announcement, which, you know, Greg Ewan seemed to be pretty um hot to trot on this week when i was talking to him he was he was expecting big things and this weekend he said he's going to be reading very uh, busy busy weekend he said yeah so this is this is what uh, the new rules are so basically the province has come out and they're overhauling the two major policies for land use uh, which is the greater golden horseshoe um area uh, growth plan right and um i guess that would also be the provincial policy statement too right so yeah that's... basically basically what they're doing is they're they're giving the power um, to the municipalities um, to be able to increase. So I guess the urban boundaries is something that they want to expand on, um, unbuilt land, um, minimum density targets in, in, in certain areas. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, it's all fine and dandy. And you know yeah. what we're going to end up with? Nothing. Come on, say something. A bunch of permits. A bunch of permits. A bunch of permits. Without, without uh, people to build them? How do you, how, how, even if you bring in another million people, like how do you train these people to build a high rise building? <laughs> you know what? I was in a, I was in a pizza um, establishment. That's probably a good fancying, place to start. Yeah. Fancying myself a pizza the other day, downtown on King street. Look and I you. thought, well, here I go, you know, get some pizza. And there's a lot of construction guys in there and they were working. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm I didn't not... hear a lick of English in that conversation there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. I had no idea that they were all like maybe like European, Eastern European, something like that. I'm not sure, but yeah. there wasn't a lick of English being talked over there. So I think the guys who are coming over here, I think a lot of them are working on those towers, on those buildings. For sure they are. So yeah. they're learning on the fly. Remember I said weeks ago, like I, I wasn't kidding. Like they it's had like colorful you're vests waiting. on and construction hats. They knew what they were doing. I mean, that's what it takes. If you if yeah. you if you can put on a vest. Yeah. a hard hat and you can yeah. stand around and like look like you're kind of doing something yeah like like this seems to be like think, yeah, an area of expertise yeah, 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 for yeah. many that's people an extra 25 in construction cents right that. yeah that that gives you a little boost hey listen now it's like if you show up every day on time or relatively close to on time yeah. and you don't just disappear when you get a paycheck for a week five days a week you're gonna work five days a week listen there's definitely people willing start? to do it it's yeah. not that there won't be people willing to do the work, but like, yeah. let's think this through. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've said this on air, but I don't go on the rides at the CNE anymore because I just picture somebody from minimum wage putting up the roller coaster or the ride, taking mm -hmm. it up and down, up and down and being like, like, look at the people in the mall. Like they have a nice, it's warm. They can go for lunch around the court. Like they have a bathroom. It's beautiful, right? And they're like, fuck this. What am I doing this for fucking minimum wage for? Fuck you. Fuck this. Fuck this. I'm going to stand here on my phone with my giant nails and my huge eyelashes, right? And I'm going to not give a fuck and I'm going to show up and get paid because that's all you got to do nowadays, right? Yeah. So like there's people willing to do the work, but TK, do you want to live in a building that was built by a guy making minimum wage who doesn't know what he's doing, who doesn't give a fuck? Yes. Oh, 
No. Why? But I'm I'm just joking. But I think that uh, you're right partially and that there are going to be people who are going to be on a learning curve. But just like everything else, you know, when we started this podcast, Daryl, we had no clue what we were doing. We had no clue. And today, look at us now. It was a parent, though. It was a parent. Look at us now. You can't do that with a high rise. You can't. Maybe after five or six years, though. That's an even better point. Still clueless, (laughs) right? So what the hell? We have no training, though. These guys are going to have proper training. I I believe that the workforce that we're importing is going to be better suited to build these buildings over time. So better suited know. than like my 20 year old. Yeah. Because well, she's think about entitled. it. The buildings that are under application right now aren't getting built for seven years. So we're good. We hmm. just need to add them onto existing job sites. The guys who are all retiring and stuff will start training them. By the time all these buildings get built, we'll have this amazing workforce that everyone's just, they got two hammers in okay, each so hand. And I'm going to make a prediction here. Okay. Yeah. TK. Yeah. We will see an increase in Buildings and homes falling apart in the next 20 years. Mm. Not lasting as long, crumbling, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You already see it. Like you see balconies falling apart and you go into buildings that were built 10 years ago and there's tiles missing on walls and things need to be fixed. Cracks in the gar- like the underground Nobody knows how things are actually getting built. We saw there was a story about a building that like collapsed the other day. Like, how does this happen? Well, that was a yeah, you're right. That was under con- new construction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, somebody's inspecting that hearing, all the time. I know. I don't remember ever hearing about those type of things before. No, I mean, somebody well, inspects. Why you got to try to put nails in the whole build more houses ideas? Like, you never I love allow the me, idea. Listen, for bullet me, holes in all my ideas about building more properties. This is the best thing in the world for me because what do I yeah. do for a living? I get permits. I don't build things. So yeah. for me, this is ideal. I, I feel like I can go out and develop anything, and there's going to be somebody willing to buy that because a million people their, came. Their in, husband's man. a builder, and not only that. <laughs> Okay, so that's this is what I was thinking about before the show. A million people came in, reportedly. A million people came in last year. However they came in, however they count it, who knows, okay? But the number was yeah. a million. Yeah. That ended December 31st. We are now April 8th or 9th. 9th is when this airs, okay? So we're April 9th, and they didn't stop letting people in. I didn't hear any plans of slowing the pace down or anything. So like, Mm -hmm. what the hell are we going to do with all these people? It feels more crowded now, doesn't it? Like there's traffic everywhere. You can't get, no. I don't feel more crowded. No, I feel like it's the same thing it's always been. I mean, we're all these people just out on the streets. They're at home. It's been winter. How am I supposed to say it's been more crowded? When you go downtown, like, yeah. don't you feel like there's like people are following me? Oh, well, never mind. No, that doesn't happen. I don't know. I feel like there's way more people here. The services are getting worse and worse and worse. There's like, mm-hmm. like, look at unemployment. I mean, there's so many people chasing jobs. How can there be any unemployment? We got How? more jobs added than than more jobs added than again. Expected. We just keep on beating like crushing job numbers. So, which so is a ha- good case for which is a good case for. Raising more interest, interest rates. more. Yeah. That's not good. What's going to happen if Is they raise good? interest rates further, Daryl? I don't know. Like we talked yesterday. If yeah. if the va- okay, so if the values go up, then it <laughs> softens the blow of the rate increase. <laughs> rates can right? go up as much as they like as long as the prices keep following. As it long as suit. the prices no keep problem. going up. Can we talk about that now? Are we sure. done with the other uh yeah, did I you finish so. your tangent there? I'm done now. Yeah, I'm done. But let's talk about something Definitely. people care about. I think people like, loved. I, I think I think people really like what you just said. Maybe I hope so. But yeah. like, more importantly, like prices are up and listings are down. And what's crazy? Listings are down. We're we're getting a ton of listings. We did like sixty five deals last month. But this is the thing. It's TK like yesterday he's showing me his phone and he's swiping through his like hundred new listings that are his. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. TK, no, but seriously, TK all of a sudden has like five new listings on the market. Like. Boom. And you said that you have stuff coming up, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody else has said that they have stuff coming up. And we talked about how everybody was like, I got listings in my back pocket. Like, we're just, it's coming. They're they're getting ready or they're about to, like, it's ready to go. Meanwhile, we had like the least listings since like 2001 in a month. Like, there's no listings, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know about like when it, like historically, but there's definitely a low number of listings for sure. 
Slowest month for new listings since 2001 okay. is what I read somewhere. I, I, I believe it. Um, and, and sales are still down 36% though. So you have to also like the volume of people. So this time last year, March last year, every one of my listings would get 80 showings in a week. January, I was getting like 200 in a week. Oh. Mm. So now we're at um, like 40. 40 showings? In a week, yeah. You can get like 30, like a good 40, 40, you know, unless you've like underpriced it or something like that, which I don't do that. I just try to price it as close to the value. And get. hold back offers? If I'm holding back offers, I, I'm still pricing it as close to the value as I can. If I'm not holding back offers and I'm just putting it up. It's a waste of time for everybody if you price it low and have all these people that never stood a chance at getting the house to come and see it and make an offer. And like, what a waste everybody's time. Yeah, That's smarter as the agent that's listing it to get rid of that horse shit. Because you have to deal with all those offers, right? Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to deal with a bunch that you're like- I've what done the, the fuck is this I've, shit? I've done the studies on the recent ones back in the day, like last year. You know what? It might have got you a lot more money. But recently, mm. looking at what the sale price, the final sale price is, it's really just like what it was worth. What it was so, worth. Yeah. What you so thought like the, it was the worth. The last one was sold for 1.1. So this guy listed at 899 and sells it for 1.1. So, but then how do we get like this Guelph house that was like listed for 165 and sold for 165? And I'm like, Guelph. One, but it must one, have been a heck one of a anything. House. Must have been what? a heck of a house. Well, what? Who gives a shit? It's in it Guelph. Been, but the cost of construction alone was probably a million. Yeah, bucks. but why build it then? Like why? Well, Guelph, whoever built it to... probably thought, you know, when they were buying the land or when they were getting the permits, that it was a good idea. And obviously, the market could have killed them. They probably thought they're going to get two million dollars. They're probably upset that they got one point six five. I get it. Yeah. But it's crazy that those two things actually fit in the same sentence. Mm, and I that, agree. listen, even on Twitter, the agent's like, it's not my fault. It went for 165. Like the market dictates the price. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but he was getting roasted on Twitter? Poor guy. Well, I was, no, I posted something because somebody said 1.65. And I was like, like, first of all, like there's a stupid buyer, which means there has to at least be one stupid realtor, right? Which means there could be two stupid realtors involved, but there has to be an appraiser that's willing to do something. And there has to be a mortgage broker or more like lender that's willing, like some, a lot of shit has to happen or mm -hmm. just a boatload of cash. Right. Mm -hmm. And so who the fuck who has like 800,000 or $650,000 sitting around or the whole thing cash wants to put it in Guelph. Like that's, that just seems like not a, a, a wealthy smart person move to me, but that's what the guy said. He's like, there's so many immigrants coming in that have some money and the mm -hmm. values are good here and we can't help what they're willing to pay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's part of the problem. He's like, that's not part of the problem. The government's the problem. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, the government's part of the problem, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems. And it doesn't seem like any of these solutions fix the problem, TK. I don't even but, think these ones put many dents into the solution, quite honestly. So what, what are you saying? You're saying that the I'm prices are going to continue enough. to climb? No, I'm saying we or, didn't build the right foundation like to handle You're Pumping the market? No. Yeah. Yeah. The market's going to have no choice unless some crazy disastrous, weird world thing happens. Cause yeah. that's the only thing that knocks. I'm, this I'm, I'm listing just so you know, without like divulging too much information, I'm listing properties from distressed sellers and we're, and we're selling them at good prices and it's bailing them out. Right. Yeah. But that's different. That's a little different. Now, but but right? we've, been, we've been all predicting that these sellers are all in trouble and all the kind of, well, the ones that are in trouble are calling and they're saying, I'm in trouble. And we're saying, let's list and we're listing the property and we're selling it. And they're getting enough money to be able to walk out. Right. Some of it's them these... with, you know, bruises, but other others, you know, some of them are going to walk out and be okay. It's these, cr I don't know how you can make sense out of a $1.2 million mortgage. Okay. Or a million dollar mortgage at 6% or 8%. I mean, if you're an immigrant, where the fuck is all this money coming from? Mm -hmm. Right. If you just came in here, or you've been here for two, three years. How are you doing this? Well, I mean, we know how a lot of them are doing it. It's been in the news, right? 
But the ones that aren't like, how are they getting that money here? Like, yeah. there's so many things that shouldn't allow this to happen, but they it just keeps happening. And and so, if you bring in more of it, like like we hear, they they the immigrants don't generally buy when they land here, right? Like that happens after they've Three been here ago, for a bit, yeah. right? So they rent a bit first, and I mean, geez, we see all this price or a rental. But who's renting first when you really when you come here? Like I imagine, I imagine that would be like the ones who are just like starting out. They're getting jobs. They the ones that are going to be construction. But if you got money workers. and you get here, you're just like, hmm, like you're sending your wife. While you're, I remember I was uh, dealing with these Russian clients and this guy had like this like villa back in some part of Russia and I'm taking his wife and son around and they're looking at houses in North York. They're like 2 million and he's on video chat with me. He lives in like a place that looks like like Los Angeles, but it's in Russia and he's got like this like huge property and he's like, yeah, we like this. We like this. That's what people with money do. They send their family first and they get, they get the uh, properties tied up before they come. Right. And they're they're not bringing it here because they think it's a better investment opportunity. They're bringing it here to keep it safe, right? So they that money. they don't That's lose it. it. It doesn't yeah. evaporate, right? Exactly. Yeah. So they don't care if they pay a little more. They just want to get the asset and they just want to get the money out, right? Yeah. So all of these things, like all of these things, fuck up this market so badly. So, I mean, if you add... 500,000 more people to the mix without any plan in order, okay? No plan, no extra infrastructure in place, no more people. I mean, actually, they have ramped up the at least the salaries in the government offices, but like, and I guess they have actually hired a lot of people, but I mean, have you noticed a difference in the services? You know where they added people? To the, uh, what do we call it here? The CRA, the CRA. CRA and the IRS are coming after everybody hard now. I heard that they aren't. I heard that the CRA is really like not doing what they could do for yeah, the get, people who are getting all the CERB and the, the business loans. Yeah, get ready. That's what I think too. I think it's coming. Get ready. I think it's coming. Like eventually oh, yeah. they're going to wake up and say, hold on, there's- We, we need, need this money. money. Yeah, we need this money. <laughs> we well, guess what? Guess when that this. is. Guess when yeah. that is. Um, when the economy changes. Well, where's all the money coming from? Mm. Well, like, I, think that's a big I think that's a big strategy with immigration too, is also like tax revenue, right? It's like the well, more people that you have coming in here that you can start taxing, then the more uh, revenue you're able to generate. Yeah, if they're on a, a trackable currency and they're not getting paid cash under the table to make it all affordable for everybody. Yeah. Who in their right mind like doing a renovation now? Of, I'd like Is, to know the percentage of people though who are on like you know refugee um, like status and have and have like you know uh, social assistance and stuff like that too. I'd like to know the percentage of that because everyone always talks about that when they say, oh, the immigrants are coming and we're paying them. And it's if you're going to retire, you're better off to take a, you know, claim yourself as a refugee than an old age pension because you get paid more and yada, yada, yada. But really, I'd like to know the numbers on that. If anyone's got the numbers, put, put them in the comments um, about uh, how many people actually are refugees versus um, like high skilled workers. So, but that are on welfare? Is that what you no, mean? No, new immigrants are coming in. Because like when you're a refugee, you get like some sort of compensation. Hmm. Yeah, so that must be going up like crazy. Didn't we just bring in like half of Ukraine? Well, I'm just saying, but 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 if if half of Ukraine is only a hundred thousand people and we brought in a million, it's only ten percent. So I'd like to know the percentage. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways, Daryl, I won't be able to help you with that, TK. Is there anything Sorry. else you want to talk about? There was lots of stuff that I wanted today. to talk about. I we talked about none today. of it, TK. Good. None of it. All Good. this important stuff. My list stuff. was more important today than your list. What about BlackRock? Like, what about Paris and BlackRock? Have you seen that crazy related. enough? Canadian real estate. Here we are. Canadian real estate. Sometimes you absolutely amaze me, TK. Yeah, absolutely. The fact, okay. BlackRock yeah. is the biggest company on the earth, Okay. Mm -hmm. How much real and estate holdings do they have in Canada? I I bet you more than you could even imagine. Okay. I'm not saying that they don't. Okay. But percentage wise. How much will they, they is the question. Mm. How much will they? Okay. In Protesters the next... in Paris. How are... do, you, do you know what's happening? Have you of seen course. it? Yes, yes. This is crazy. Okay. But they have and a different I... type of system over there, right? For their for their pensioners. So that's why. But becomes... the BlackRock things, I don't think about pensions. Is it? Okay. 
I think that's a separate thing. The They're in the streets thing. about pensions. They're at BlackRock's head office saying, you're fucking up our planet and you fucking assholes and fuck you and you're not going to run this earth and... But they're just protesting right now. They're all just like, they're hey, protesting what about else can we protest? Everything. What else can we got? What else what can we complain about? What else can we protest yeah, about? Not, I think the length of this show up. should be protested. I'm today. not caught up in that. Well, I'm protesting right now. So, Well, you have a good day, sir. If you are listening still, please check if us out. If we didn't bore you to death Apple, today with this development Google, nonsense. Spotify, podcast, leave us a review. Follow us over there. Comment, you know you want to. Comment, comment. Yeah. We don't get a lot of uh, reviews, especially the Apple one, because there's some bad reviews. You got to bump up our stars. And if you're going to leave a bad review, then I don't know. I guess that's okay too. Really, we'll take anything at this point. At this point, yeah, just yeah. write something. Just Does something. it make a difference just make if it, it's make bad? It so we know that somebody's watching it. But um, happy Easter to you. Happy think. Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you. Everybody who celebrates Easter, happy Easter. Yes. Happy Easter. See you, see you next time.